to show you how to make easy one day Dutch oven bread. There are a lot of recipes on YouTube. Um, some elements to making bread that you need to be aware of is your elevation and the temperature in your kitchen. If it's the middle of winter and you're at 3,000 feet, um, you're going to have to do a little bit of um, effort to get your bread to rise. Um, you're also going to need to check a table for your elevation to see how much yeast you're going to need and you're going to have to extend your bake times. But for us, we're right at um, 1,000 feet sea level. It's spring, so we should be good to go with that. So all you're going to need to make your bread is three and a half cups of flour. I use all-purpose unbleached. Um, that is my personal preference. I don't care for bleached flour. I never have. Uh, you can use whole wheat. You can use bread flour. Um, I wouldn't recommend using self-rising unless you um, read the instructions. I don't know if you need to add yeast to that or reduce your amount of yeast. I just use regular unbleached flour. A teaspoon of salt. A pinch of baking soda. A cup and a half of warm water. A tablespoon of yeast. And a teaspoon of sugar. So, gonna mix this stuff together. Um, you mix the yeast and the sugar and the water. And then you mix the salt and the flour in the bowl while you wait for your yeast to froth. So I'll show you guys how to do that. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take our cup and a half of water and our tablespoon of baking yeast and we're going to mix it together with some sugar and let it sit and froth while we add the dry ingredients to a large mixing bowl. You want to use a bowl um, about twice as big as you think you're going to need because as that bread sits well, as the dough sits, it's going to rise and expand, so you want to make sure you have plenty of room. You don't want to use a really small mixing bowl because when you go to take it to bake it, you'll have dough just all over the place. Okay, so we're going to take our teaspoon of sugar, add it to our warm water, and all sugar really does is help activate the yeast. And this is, um, what I'm going to use is just simple baking yeast I bought in bulk at a local health food store. Um, you can get the little active yeast packets at a grocery store or wherever. This was just, um, since I know I'm going to be making a lot of it, I wanted a lot of yeast. So that was my solution, was to buy in bulk. And stir this up until you get the yeast to kind of dissolve in there. So that's good. It's good. All right, so set that aside. Take your mixing bowl, add your three and a half cups of flour, and I've already added my dash of baking soda in with my teaspoon of salt. Now if you notice, I use a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of sugar. And the reason I do that is because when you have equal parts sugar and salt, you get a bread that has a nice even flavor. It's neither salty nor sweet. Um, but you can really tailor that any way you want it. If you want a saltier bread to use dipping in soups or a base for a garlic bread, I would recommend probably adding two to three times as much sugar. So one teaspoon sugar, two teaspoons salt or three teaspoons salt. 
any higher than three teaspoons and I think you're going to get super salty bread. So do keep that in mind. So we're just going to kind of shift that around, let that settle in there. And as you can see with the yeast, I've already got a little bit of foaming action going on. Bring it up so you can see that. A little bit of foaming. So we're going to let this sit probably about five minutes and then we'll add it a little bit of time to our flour mix and get a really good dough started. So we'll let that sit for a few minutes. Alright guys, see this? Look at all that beautiful foam. Got about almost half an inch of foam. Almost. So Gonna take that and mix it into our dry ingredients using a spatula or a whisk, either or, or even a wooden spoon, or your hands if you like to get nice and dirty, but um, wouldn't recommend it. Would definitely recommend a utensil. And I usually just start in a little space and I pour in a little bit and start stirring. Professional mixers use this technique. If you have one, you can use that too. You don't have to do this by hand. But a tabletop mixer just mixes in one place, turns the bowl, and mixes in one place. So keep that technique in mind when you're mixing it together. Now it starts to get a little bit dry. Add a little bit more. Whoop! And try not to spill it all over yourself. Sorry. For those people that like to mix with your hands, that was a nasty moment just for you. So yeah. Going really good. No, nobody really finds watching me mixing entertaining. If you want to skip ahead a few minutes, I'm sure I'll be done. Maybe a minute. And that's the last of the yeast. So you get this nice, pile floury dough that we're mixing together. it's a little bit on the dry side, you might add a little bit of oil to it. I would not recommend adding any water. The couple of times I've added water because I felt it's too dry, um, my bread didn't rise right. So, I think this is just a little bit dry, so I'm just going to add a tiny bit of olive oil. That's also, if you like the taste of olive oil, or if you're making a base bread for garlic bread, adding about a fourth a cup of olive oil at this point, or after the dough has risen, um, really locks in that flavor, and you can taste it when you eat the bread. Yeah, there we go. That's the consistency that I would like. I'll just show this to you. It's a See that? It's stretchy and pliable. Oop. Sorry guys, my camera batteries died. I thought they were gonna last through this part, but I guess they had other plans. But anyway, here's your dough after you mix it. Like I said, this is a little bit on the dry side, but I'm going for a light, fluffy table bread. So what you're going to do is you're going to put clear wrap 
over this or if you have a baker's towel you can use that as well uh, and put it in a good warm place free of drafts a cold oven is a good place to put it or if you have space on your countertop in a place that's not going to get a breeze from like a fridge door opening or a room door opening or closing a lot um, that'll be a good place for it so you're going to let it set for at least three hours and it will double or triple in size and I leave it for four hours so any time between three and four hours is a good time to take the next step. So we're going to get this covered and then let it rest and rise. And then we'll have yeasty, airy goodness when we come back. I'll be back. I just wanted to show you guys real quick. This has been about an hour. Look how much it's risen. It is all the way actually up to here in the center but it is filling up that bowl it'll probably reach the top by the time it's done um, but yeah it's only been rising for about an hour all right so it has officially been a little over four hours actually forgot about my bread for a little bit so as you can see it has seriously fluffed up look at those air pockets it's gonna make some good bread now before we do the next step with the bread which you'll need some olive oil or um, canola or vegetable work too I want to show you my Dutch oven here is my beautiful cast iron Dutch oven. I love it. But any pot um, or type of Dutch oven with a lid that can go in the oven will work. You can also use a loaf pan. Here's one I did earlier with a loaf pan. Works just as good. But for this recipe we're going to use our Dutch oven here. And a note on this one if you have an enameled Dutch oven, uh, most people have no qualms at all about putting the bread directly in it and cooking it. Most of the time with the cast iron, it's recommended you use parchment paper. Um, that's because when you get a new cast iron or you cook with a cast iron, depending on how you clean it and treat it, you may have leftover food residue and a lot of nasty stuff you don't want getting in your bread. I put my bread directly in my cast iron Dutch oven just because I keep it well cleaned and well seasoned after every use. So I have no qualms about using it without parchment paper, but to be on the safe side, I do recommend that you do use parchment paper if you're not sure how clean or well seasoned your Dutch oven is. And if you guys have any questions about cast iron um, care tips, I'll be happy to share those with you if you want to send me a message about it. Alright, let's get this bread going. Alright, so now we're going to take our bread, we're going to remove the clear wrap. Oh, I just love the smell of like bread dough, the yeastiness, and just, oh, so good. Alright, so now we're going to take our olive oil. And before when I made the dough, I did not use my hands, I used a spatula. For this part, you will have to get a little dirty and use your hands. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. What you want to do is fill up your palm with olive oil or whatever kind of oil you're using. Rub it in your hands. Get both sides of your fingers. Let all the excess olive oil drip into your bread. That'll help you out getting this out of the bowl. What you're going to do is you're going to scoop it out. And it's pulling away really easily. That's what you want. Less mess in your bowl, the better. And you're going to pick it up and just start kind of 
rolling it around, tucking it up under, kind of like you see at pizza places where they push it down and under. Alright, then we're just going to kind of squeeze and pull a little. Alright, that's good. Gonna pinch it, fold it over and pinch it till you get the shape you want. Basically, a round bowl like that. Put it immediately in your Dutch oven, cover it, and stick it in the oven. Alright, so we put it in the Dutch oven, stick it in a cold oven. That may seem a little um, non-practical, but I'll show you why. Alright, then you bake it at 450. Um, if you're at sea level um, or using an electric oven, you want to run it for 25 minutes. But because I have a gas oven and I'm a little high up, I'm going to go for 30. And then we'll come back and... Um, oh, one quick tip I forgot. With whatever container you're putting your bread in, Make sure it is well oiled before you put your bread in. You saw my Dutch oven was nice and shiny. That's because I had sprayed it down with oil and I even sprayed the bottom with a little bit of butter, spray butter. That's just really going to add a nice crust to our bread. So we'll let that go for 30 minutes and be back. Okay, so the timer just went off. So we're basically going to pull the Dutch oven out and take off the lid and then we'll put it back in the oven at 450 again for another 25 to 30 minutes. And this time will vary depending on how brown you want your crust. 25 minutes is the minimum. Uh, if this is your first time doing it or you're not sure about the recipe, I would recommend going 25 minutes and then upping it in increments of five until you get the color that you want. Alright, I took it out of the oven so you can see it's looking good, it's risen up well, it's got a good shape, it's got a cracked crust. So we're going to toss it oh back in the guys. oven. Six minutes left. I wish you could smell how good this is. It just, it just, the aroma fills the kitchen. It's wonderful. It also drives me crazy because you can't cut into it until you let the bread cool. So it's like, yeah, in five and a half minutes I'll be able to take it out of the oven, but I won't be able to eat it for another hour. <laughs> All right, guys, see you in about five and a half minutes. Oh my gosh, you guys, it looks and smells amazing. Just put it out of the oven after another 30 minutes. It is perfect. I have not gotten one to get this textured crust until now. So I'm glad this is the one I picked to do my video on. Um, I've gotten them this color and, the, and looking like this except for the crackled crust. I have not achieved that until now. So victory! Alright, so now that your bread is baked, you're going to want to take it out of its hot container, whether it's a Dutch oven or a loaf pan or whatever you've decided to use, and set it out to cool for at least an hour. Um, in my experience, even at the hour mark, it's still really hot. Um, it has to be, you have to be able to touch it and lay your hand on it for Oh, a good three to five seconds without burning yourself before you can cut into it. That's a good gauge of how long 
it needs to cool before you can cut into it. So I've got my cooling rack ready, and this is just a cooling rack on top of a half inch thick cutting board. And this next part's a little tricky, so I'll need both hands so you guys won't be able to see it. But basically, you'll need something to grab your pot with, a pot holder. And I recommend a clean dish towel to kind of catch your bread in. Basically, all I'm going to do is flip this Dutch oven, catch my bread with the towel, and then lay it right side up on the cooling rack. Alright, and here is our finished product. It has been sitting cooling for about two hours. Check that fluffy goodness out. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. Uh, let me know how your bread turns out. And I'm going to go eat this. Thanks for watching.